The second scum and villainy ship in Wave 7 is the Kyrax Fighter. This ship is comparable to the X-Wing, or maybe the TIE Advanced, in terms of firepower and durability, and fills the role of a solid, well-rounded dogfighter for the scum and villainy faction. The maneuver dial is similar to that of the X-Wing, with the most notable exception being that the Kyrax can make speed 1 turns, but can't turn at speed 3. It has all three banks and straights at speeds 2 through 4. Topping it off are a pair of K-turns at speeds 4 and 5, which are also the only red maneuvers on the dial. This is a solid dial for this type of a ship. On to the stats, where we see the similarities to the X-Wing continue. 3 attack, 2 agility, 4 hull, and 1 shield. This is almost exactly the same as an X-Wing, although it does trade off 1 shield for an extra hull. The action bar is as basic as it gets. Focus and target lock. No frills or surprises here. All Kyrax fighter pilots have access to a missile and an illicit upgrade. The illicit category keeps getting more and more interesting with each new wave, so it's certainly good to see it here. This upgrade is what's really setting Scum and Villainy apart from the other factions in the game. Talon Bane Cobra is the top pilot for the Kyrax, and he's the first Scum and Villainy pilot with a skill of 9. This is a big deal, since the Scum faction has typically had lower pilot skills, with even some of their big names like Prince Shizor, Bosk, and IG-88 topping out at pilot skills of 7 and 6s. He costs 28 points, and can also take an elite pilot talent. His ability lets him double range combat bonuses when attacking or defending. What this means is that when he attacks at range 1, he rolls 2 extra dice for a total of 5 dice, and when he defends at range 3, he rolls 2 extra dice for a total of 4 defense dice. Engine upgrade seems like a solid match for Talonbane, since it will help him close the gap and set up those heavy range 1 attacks. Graz the Hunter has a pilot skill of 6 and costs 25 points. When he defends, if the attacker is inside his firing arc, he rolls an additional defense die. This is a solid ability that will give Graz some extra survivability, especially when hunting those turreted ships. Black Sun Ace has a pilot skill of 5 and costs 23 points. He can equip an elite pilot talent in addition to the missile and illicit upgrade slots. Finally, Cartel Marauder has a pilot skill of 2 and costs 20 points. This is a big deal because for a ship that's pretty much on par with an X-Wing in terms of firepower and survivability, you can field a squadron of 5 of these pilots in a standard match. The cheapest X-Wing costs 21 points, which limits them to a maximum of 4 in a squad. 5 Kyrax fighters, even without any upgrades, can present a formidable amount of focused fire, able to roll 15 attack dice in a single round of combat. This expansion pack contains 5 upgrades, with only one that we haven't seen before. Crackshot is new in Wave 7 and is also available in the Hound's Tooth expansion. It costs 1 point and can be discarded when attacking a ship within your firing arc to cancel one evade result. It's a solid, inexpensive elite pilot talent that can be used to set up powerful kill shots, especially with pilots like Talonbane at range 1. Lightning Reflexes is the new upgrade in this expansion. It's another 1 point elite pilot talent, and it's only usable on small ships. After you execute a white or green maneuver, you may discard it to rotate your ship 180 degrees and then receive a stress token, after the check pilot stress step. So what this does is let you turn any green or white maneuver into a K-turn or S-loop style move. That wording on the end about receiving stress after the check pilot stress step is there as a reminder that using this card on a green maneuver won't immediately clear the stress token from lightning reflexes. Predator is an elite pilot talent that we haven't seen since Wave 4's TIE Defender expansion. It's good to have another way to get this card, since it's great on a lot of different ships. Homing Missiles is a missile upgrade that was also included in the Slave 1 and A-Wings expansions. It's worth noting that Homing Missiles plus Crackshot, fired against a high agility ship like an IG-2000 or TIE Interceptor, will shut down both evade tokens and and evade result on the defense roll, giving you a very good chance of getting some damage through on those hard-to-hit ships. If you have Lot's Razi's YV-666 on the board, you can increase the odds even more dramatically in your favor by reducing the defender's agility. 
A combo like that should make Sunter Fell players run for the hills. Finally, there's a copy of Glitter Stim, which is also included in the Hound's Tooth expansion. This two-point illicit upgrade lets you discard it at the start of combat and take a stress token. Then, until the end of the round, you can change any focus results you roll to either hit or evade results. It's great that it's in this expansion because this is, I think, the best illicit upgrade in the game so far. And the Kyrex is a ship that scum players will likely want at least two or more of, so getting additional copies of Glitter Stim inexpensively is a great bonus. And that's the Kyrex Fighter Expansion Pack. This is a solid workhorse of a starfighter, which is something that Scum and Villainy needed. It brings some powerful new options to the table for the faction, including its first pilot with a skill of 9, and the ability to field a swarm of 5 powerful ships. Although the upgrades in this expansion are mostly repeats, having another way to get Crackshot, Predator, and Glitter Stim is definitely welcome, as these are all very powerful upgrades. Finally, Lightning Reflexes is a huge addition to the game that can give small ships access to some surprise maneuvering. I'll be honest, this ship is the one I was least looking forward to out of Wave 7. However, the addition of a truly amazing pilot in Talon Bane Cobra for the faction, as well as the copies of Predator, Crackshot, and Glitterstem, make this expansion well worth picking up. Whether you want to try fielding a swarm of five cartel marauders, or a tricked-out Talonbane Cobra flying wingman to a loaded YV-666, or anything in between, this expansion definitely brings a lot of very good build options to scum and villainy. Thanks for watching the Cardboard Dungeons X-Wing Ship Reviews. See you next time.